Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 12, Interfaith Holidays of Spring. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Madison? Doing pretty good. So today is our holiday, spring holiday special, and joining us today is uh, a special guest host with us. Um, Mommy, otherwise known as Michelle Whalen. Hello, Michelle. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Wonderful. I love the ears. Thank you. I figured I'd, you know, be the festive uh, holiday person. Very much in line with the, the holiday spirit here. So let's run down real quick what we're going to talk about today. So we are going to talk about what an interfaith marriage is, an interfaith family. Uh, Then we'll talk about some religion and interfaith statistics. Then we'll go on and talk about the holidays themselves. We'll talk about what Passover is. From a high-level standpoint, we won't go into a lot of the details. We'll talk about what Easter is. And uh, then we'll discuss how we, as an interfaith family, celebrate the holidays. So let's get right into it. So an interfaith marriage is defined as, traditionally, it's also called a mixed marriage. It's defined as a marriage between spouses professing different religions. Although interfaith marriages are most often contracted as civil marriages, in some instances they may be contracted as religious marriage. This depends on religious prohibitions against the marriage by the religion, by one or both spouses, based on religious doctrine or tradition. So basically what we are talking about here in an interfaith marriage is one parent is one religion, in this case uh, Jewish, mommy is Jewish, um, and the other parent is a different religion, which would be me, um, I'm not really sure. I was raised Christian, but I, I don't really know uh, what I am at this point in time. So that's what we're talking about from an interfaith standpoint. So as a result of that, um, you have different traditions, different holidays that you celebrate. Both religions have different holidays. Yep. Um, so when we come to spring, what two holidays do we always celebrate? Easter and Passover. Which one do you like more? Um, I can't. That's a loaded question. (laughs) Which parent do you love more? Wow, nice one. Yes, we don't we don't want to we don't want to put the the child under that much pressure. Right, right, right. So, but um, Michelle, you you tell me what's it like being in an interfaith marriage at this point in time? Well, it it has its challenges, obviously from. Um, you know, not wanting to exclude certain traditions or, or things, you know, from one holiday versus the other. You know, you don't want to make one out to seem better than another. It's, it's right. not a competition, um, unlike the fact that you like competition, but um, only if you're winning. Only if I'm winning. <laughs> right. Really? Okay, I thought that Daddy was actually going to mention that, but... <laughs> Mommy beat him to it. Um, awesome. So it, it, it's it's different, obviously. It's different than what I grew up with because I grew up in a Jewish household. There, you know, we didn't deal with, 
you know, having to, to deal with Easter or Christmas, um, you know, when when I was growing up. So it, it's very different than, you know, than what I went through. So it's, but I think we've made it work. Um, I think in a lot of respects, we don't really deal with the more religious aspects of the Christian holidays. Right. And um, we'll get into a little bit more detail about that when we get down to that. Right. So, you know, whereas with the, the Jewish traditions, I've tried to bring in more of, of that, but obviously, you know, still trying to, to keep it where, you know, everybody <laughs> everybody's interested right. in knowing about it. So, Madison, what's, how do you like, you know, having both sides of the coin, as it may be, celebrating both both sets of holidays? Well, I definitely enjoy it because I get to have a taste of two different religions with their different holidays and the different way they do things. It's also, it's also interesting when people sometimes ask me what's it like um, growing up in a Jewish and Christian household. And I always tell them it's nice. You get to experience two different holidays from two different religions with two different aspects. And I just enjoy it. I like the cultures we do. And I just overall like both culture religions, and I'm glad I can be a part of it. Now, do you have a lot of kids at school that are in a similar situation with dual faith uh, households? Well, I don't really know. Um, I I don't really, at, we don't really talk about that much. All I really know is that I'm pretty much the only other, the only Jewish person in my class, but my, te- one of my teachers isn't, is um, actually Christian, but her husband is Jewish, and they have kids, so they celebrate um, Jewish and Christian holidays, so I guess that's the best I can relate. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Ex- so, the um, in doing my research for this podcast, there was a couple of interesting statistics that I came across that was related to both religion and interfaith. Um, One of the things that I saw that I thought was very interesting was based on a a poll from the Pew Research Forum, uh, 70.6% of Americans are of some denomination of Christian belief. Um, 22% of Americans are unaffiliated. And only 1.9% of Americans were of Jewish faith. Um, But if you look at those numbers and how uh, sideways those numbers really are, how unbalanced they are, the interesting interesting takeaway that I got from that was 42% of marriages in the U.S. are interfaith marriages. And uh, kids in an interfaith marriage are twice as likely to be brought up with the mother's religion Um, And 25% of married couples who begin as an interfaith couple become a same faith couple. So my question on that is to you, Michelle, do you, first of all, what's your reaction to those numbers? Well, I never heard of Pew Forum, so I didn't get to vote. (laughs) 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 So I think think it's skewed. Um, I, I definitely could see that a good portion of the marriages are, are interfaith um, in in terms of, you know, between Christian and maybe not affiliated with, with anything. Um, not saying that, you know, half of the marriages, you know, have a, a Jewish partner. Right. Um, but I, I do see, you know, in, in the Jewish religion, if you are of an interfaith coupling, um, whatever the mother is, that's what the the children right, technically right. are. Um, you know, so in in our case, Madison, you know, is Jewish because I'm I'm Jewish. Right. Um, whereas my my one cousin, um, where his mother wasn't Jewish, but he was brought up as Jewish, and later on, my aunt did convert. To Judaism, she was 
you know, she was raised, you know, Catholic. And, and when, you know, she gave birth, she was still Catholic, but yet they chose to raise my cousin as Jewish. And then, you know, later on, like I said, she, she did convert. Right. Now, do you know, are you aware of, or associate with a lot of interfaith couples? Actually, not really that much anymore. Um, you know, most of the people that live, you know, down in in our neck of the woods, um, you know, I'm I'm sort of the token Jewish friend. Well, I will say that in the research itself, the forty two percent could possibly be um, interdenominational Christians mm -hmm. too. I so could it's see not that just between Jewish like a Christian. Baptist and right, you know, right. a Lutheran. You know that that could definitely uh, be as well. Um, you know, but a lot of my you know Jewish friends from high school, I would say a good portion of them did you know marry someone that was Jewish, and and there's probably a handful that that didn't. You know, so it's you know I don't know if it would it would be half. But it could certainly be that, you know, across, you know, across the board. Right. So, Madison, a question for you. Um, does, does interfaith families, marriages, does that, does that hold a significance for you at all? Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm trying to, trying to figure out if, you know, when you decide at some point in time in the future you want to get married... How big of a, a factor will religion of your partner play into that? Well, it would be nice if I could marry someone from a different religion so that my child will be able to experience more um, more than one religion and their cultures. So I would like for that to happen. I'd also like to um, try and see what it would be like to... Be um, married to someone from another religion and see how, and you know how you guys have done it. I want to maybe even try it myself. So you think it's been an en enriching experience for you? Yep. That's very cool. So let's move on to what the holidays are. So we have a definition of Passover here, uh, which is kind of a layman's explanation of it. I don't think I'm qualified to read this or go into details. Uh, so I'll turn this portion of the show over to Michelle. Why, thank you as the token Jew. Thanks. I appreciate it. You're, you're our subject matter <laughs> expert, so I brought you in for this. Thanks. I appreciate it. So it's an, uh, the eight-day festival of Passover is celebrated in the early spring. Um, Passover, or Pesach, uh, as it is in Hebrew, uh, commemorates the, the emancipation of the Israelites from slavery, slavery in ancient Egypt. Uh, Pesach is observed by avoiding leavened and uh, leavened bread. Um, there is a meal that is usually done the first or second night called the Seder, which includes four cups of wine, eating matzah, bitter herbs, and retelling the story of the exodus from Egypt. In Hebrew, it's known as Pesach, which means to pass over, because God passed over Jewish homes when killing the Egyptian firstborns on the very first Passover Eve, which was one of the ten plagues. Um, actually, I learned that it wasn't God. It was actually the angel the of death. The angel of death. Yes, it was the angel of death, Daddy, not not God. Okay, that's what the website. I didn't know God had someone doing his his dirty deeds for him. Okay. <laughs> But there were the ten plagues of God. Right. God did present the Egyptians with the ten plagues when he wanted Pharaoh to let his people go. And can you name those ten plagues? <sighs> Blood, frogs. Come on, Ten Commands was just on last I, night. I, I didn't watch it. Oh. <laughs> uh, you had well, boils? Well, man. Boils. Well. You had um, 
supplies. The hail. Hail. Uh, Trump was in there somewhere, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. He wasn't. That'd be funny though. Yeah. So, so the ten plagues and the last of the ten was killing of the firstborn, and that was one that Pharaoh Ended declared, up... right? Because Pharaoh was had declared the firstborn of all the Israelites were were to be killed, right? And, and God then went, ha ha. God pulled a head fake on him. Nope. Said, oh, yep. okay. If that's what you want, that's okay. Right. But we're going to give the Jews a get out of jail free pass here with the blood on the. Yeah, put some lamb's blood over your door, and the angel of death will pass over. Okay, so your that's door. Which is where. Exactly why um, Passover is named as it is. Right, so that's where we get the name for Passover. So when we celebrate Passover, what are we actually celebrating, Madison? We're actually celebrating the equinox. Not the equinox, no. no. When we celebrate Passover, we're celebrating the exodus yeah. of uh, Pharaoh freeing the Jews because he's tired of being tormented by all these plagues. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really, you're not really celebrating the death of the firstborns? No, that's not <laughs> what I was implying. Right, we, we don't. We don't celebrate their demise. We celebrate our victory to become free. Right. From and that's slavery. the important thing to, to emphasize mm -hmm. is you're celebrating the freedom of the Israelites, not the the suffering of the Egyptian people. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's what Passover mm -hmm. is. So Easter you know, being the quasi-Christian here. All you. Um, <laughs> yep. Easter is a Christian holiday that celebrates the belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the New Testament of the Bible, the event is said to have occurred three days after Jesus was crucified by the Romans and died in roughly 30 A.D. The holiday concludes the Passion of the Christ, a series of events and holidays that begin with Lent, a 40-day period of fasting, prayer, and sacrifice, and ends with Holy Week, which includes Holy Thursday, the celebration of Jesus' Last Supper, which happened to be a Seder, um, and, ha and his 12 apostles, Good Friday, on which Jesus was crucified, and Easter Sunday, which is when he was resurrected. Although a holiday, although a holiday of high religious significance in the Christian faith, Many traditions associate with Easter as many traditions associated with Easter date back to pre-Christian pagan times. So um, Easter itself is supposed to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. The entire Christian religion is based on the premise that Jesus suffered for all of man's sins died on the cross, and was resurrected by God to go up into heaven, to ascend to heaven. Um, the interesting thing that I found in doing my research for this is that there's really no mandate for Easter in the Bible anywhere. Um, Jesus never said it should be observed. There was no um, holy passages that say it should be observed. Uh, whereas with Passover, it's mentioned... And probably a dozen times that, that that should be remembered, you know, from Holy Scripture. So Easter really only became a Christian holiday at the Council of Nicaea back in the early 300 ADs. Um, and a lot of people, you know, being the, um, no pun intended, devil's advocate, uh, I'm the type of person who always thinks the, the worst of of people and really what the what Easter turned out to be was another attempt at um, the Catholic Church trying to usurp pagan traditions. So, but nowadays we have, if you you know, obviously we have our our Easter bunny ears and we have our eggs and stuff like that. So all pagan. Um, we don't really celebrate it from the the religious side of things. So. Let's talk briefly about how we actually celebrated ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
So for this, I'll go back to Michelle. So Michelle, how do we as a family celebrate Passover? Well, usually, depending on the time of year, we usually try and, and do a Seder. Um, unfortunately, when Passover kind of starts, you know, during the week, it, it, it kind of makes it difficult to, to do a full traditional Seder. Um, also, the last couple of years, we've either been on vacation during the holidays or just getting back or just getting ready to to go away so we really haven't done a traditional seder in in a couple of years um and again it's one of those things if we can do it great if we we can't you know that's okay too i don't think you know anybody's upset you know so what's a traditional seder just give a brief overview of what a traditional sure. seder well, a, is a traditional seder uh would be where you know we would have a kind of a big meal um we would also read from the Haggadah which is a prayer book basically describing the the story of Passover uh various different parts you know again with the the drinking of the wine it gives the explanation of why there's the four cups of wine um there are uh, the four questions of why is this night different from all other nights. And it basically gives you an explanation as to why you're doing things for Passover, why you eat differently, you know, why uh, you don't eat certain foods and why you do eat certain foods. And it's a very symbolic holiday. More it's a very so, ritualized meal that we do in remembrance. Right, you know, like, obviously... Pork in general isn't kosher. Well, you know, kosher for Passover is even more strict. Um, so, you know, there's the eating the matzah as opposed to eating bread, having bitter herbs, having things with salt water to remember the tears, um, making chorosis, which is to symbolize the mortar um, to, of making the brick. So it's very everything kind of goes back to you know, the Egyptian times and, and what the Jews went through right. um, to get their freedom, to get the, the exodus. Okay. So, Madison, how do we celebrate Easter? Well, normally we would invite some of our family over and we would have, and we would, and you guys would normally set up an Easter hunt while I was busy um, talking with others and doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we'd all go on a huge Easter egg hunt. I remember one year we had a huge um, hunt. And I still remember the one year where I lost a tooth on oh, the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was kicked in the face. Uh, yeah, that old old family traditions. Kick the kid in the face, go Easter egg hunting, you know. Yeah. Losing, losing a tooth. Yeah. yeah. That, that's totally what Easter is about. Yeah. So from an Easter standpoint, we really... We only celebrate what's known as the secular aspects of Easter. We don't really celebrate the religious aspect. Yep, not at all. Uh, we don't go to church. Uh, no. We don't have a blessing at the dinner or anything like that. We celebrate what's really mainstream, you know, Easter eggs and candy. And there's and the a fun part of it. The fun part, yeah. There's, I mean, there's there's some gift giving of some sort. There's a plan exchange to symbolize, uh, you know, a lot of what we do is really what has traditionally been the pagan aspects of the spring holiday. the And funny enough, because most of the members of our extended family are pagan, so... <laughs> that's, that's correct. So that kind of, you know, but it, it kind of helps, I think, in, in most respects, to meld, you know, to to bring all of our faiths and backgrounds, you know, together, having that, you know... Um, more nature related, you know, like deal with or, or bring about, you know, it's springtime. So what's spring? It's the eggs, it's rebirth, it's flowers, it's baby bunnies and things like that. And it kind of helps to, to bring aspects of all the, the religions together and in, into one. Well, and, and I think the other thing that's interesting is the, the secular things that we do, for Easter, 
are very much what everyone else does for Easter too, mm-hmm. and they just sort of add the religious aspect right. onto it. So it's nowadays the the you know Jesus rising and all that is really just an afterthought. Everything mm-hmm. else, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's turned into a Hallmark holiday almost. Oh, as oh definitely. Everything's been been merchandised to to death there. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I remember growing up, friends maybe talking about getting an Easter basket or, you know, some sort of candy, you yeah. know, not really a whole lot, where now... You know, you you hear and, you know, you go to the stores and, you know, aisles upon aisles of of Easter candy yeah. and products and toys. And... and good luck trying to find anything that's kosher for Passover. <laughs> well, at least not in this area. <laughs> if I went someplace else, maybe. <laughs> so, Madison, my question to you is what aspects of this holiday, either the Passover or the Easter holiday, what do you think – are your favorite parts? What do you take with you? What traditions do you cherish the most out of it? Well, I'm going to start with Passover. Um, I guess the stuff I like to take away from Passover is the fact that we're all together and we're celebrating at, um, the, our victory of ex- of being able to escape from, be- beco- by- from becoming slaves. Okay. And um, I like eating the matzah. You like eating the matzah. <laughs> it's the only time of year she'll she'll be Jewish. Right. Is eating matzah. Right. Well, so God, God forbid she eats gefilte fish, but you know, what the? A... <laughs> yeah. We'll explain that later. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what about the Easter side of things? Besides the chocolate, what do you like? Well, I like having the whole family over. I mean, we normally have a bunch of snacks. I like that. I also like having the Easter egg hunts because we always go on adventures, and I always wear the bunny ears, act like I'm, act like I'm the bunny searcher, and I look for stuff. So you're you're very much like I am when it comes to religious holidays. You only celebrate the good ones. Yeah. You don't do any of the suffering ones. <laughs> if it's a feast holiday or a gift holiday, I'm there. <laughs> And and that goes for whether it's Jewish or or Christian. I'm a C and E, you know, Catholic. You know, yes, you Christmas are. and Easter is all the only thing I used to, you know, worry about. Um, but that, you know, that selfish attitude seems to have translated over to the Jewish side of right. things. Right, and, and you like Passover when it comes to matzah ball soup. It's a good feast yeah. one, yeah. And as long as I'm not making you eat gefilte fish, you're Ew. totally okay with that. that and, and I don't, I don't do the you fasting. Don't do the, you don't. Well, there's no fasting the for Passover. Well, the, the eating kosher for Passover right. is fasting. I, I have to I, give up pork, so that's fasting. <laughs> <laughs> for you, yes. Fortunately, we don't keep a kosher home during Passover. You know, I, I kind of separate what I eat from, you know, what you guys eat. I, I don't enforce it, you know. Which is a good thing because that would be a civil war. That'd be a holy war there. I, 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 <laughs> and I'd also not be able to eat bread. Right. And we know that you can't go seven days w- without it. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But you know, even with with the Christian holidays, I don't really celebrate Lent. I don't give up meat. Right, on, you don't give up anything. Well, I don't give up meat anytime. Right, I mean, that's right. Yeah, a staple part of my diet. You'll never give up meat. Never. Unless so, you lived in Japan, correct. then you'd kind of have to because they don't have protein. They don't eat protein. Well, sure they do. Do they? Yeah. What? What? They just find it in other sources. Yeah, they eat oh, a lot yeah. of fish. They eat a lot of tofu. You know, there's plenty of protein. Beans. Beans. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's a good overview of how we celebrate uh, the spring holidays, and we'll do another we'll do another interfaith episode for the winter holidays mm-hmm. when they come along too. Yeah, because there's really nothing for spring for summer or fall. Right. So I think uh, I think that's good. We can move on. So, as always, Madison, we close with your closing remarks and your shout-outs. So I turn it over to you. All righty. So if you're a family who has an interfaith um, 
family, right? Right. Um, and enjoy it because you get a taste of two different religions. I can definitely say with confidence that I definitely enjoy being in, in an interfaith family and a household. And I definitely would, and if there's anyone watching who is part of an interfaith family, I feel happy for you because you get to experience two different um, religions and, and their traditions. And I think that's cool. And anyone who does that, I consider you lucky. Okay. Any shout outs this week? Um... How about I turn it over to you first, Mommy? I guess a shout out to all of our family that we uh, aren't able to uh, get together with today. I definitely agree with that. Okay. Anything else? Any other shout outs you want to throw out there, Maddie? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, okay. pretty much our, fa our entire extended family would be nice. Sure. So. All right. If well, you're then. watching this, there's a shout out to you. And if any, if any of my extended family is watching, I'm just going to say hi. Okay. <laughs> uh, that does it for us this week. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great podcast. Bye. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us for this one. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll catch you all next week. Goodbye. Bye.